You can achieve 100% testability in code without any testing whatsoever by simply asking yourself the question, if I wanted to test this code, how hard would it be? Can you test each business rule in isolation? And that's critical. That comes from building software in components. That's an important thing. It's different than building one big monolith. And it allows for the ability for systems to grow. So the real measure of testability is not whether you've written tests or not, but rather how easy would it be to write them. In this video, I'll show you how to identify and fix untestable code so that you can write software that's predictable, reliable, and ultimately a joy to work with, even before you write a single test. So let's dive in. Hello world, I'm David Scott Bernstein and welcome to The Passionate Programmer. In this video, we're diving into one of the most overlooked but essential virtues in great software, testability. Testability isn't about writing or running tests. It's about building systems designed for validation. When testability becomes a design philosophy, it changes everything from how you debug to how you scale. By the end of this video, you'll understand what testability truly means, why it's crucial to great software, and how to apply it effectively in your own projects. Testability is not about testing, as I say. It's about how ready your code is for validation. Think of it as the difference between forcing a puzzle piece to fit and having the pieces that click smoothly together naturally. Testability measures how straightforward it is to validate a piece of software, regardless of whether you've written a test for it or not. Software that has a lot of complexity, many conditional statements, is harder to test. We want to ensure that every code path is executed. So it's much easier and more straightforward to break multiple code paths down into their own methods. Imagine two desks, one cluttered, the other clean. On the clean desk, you find everything you need instantly. Testable systems are like the clean desk. They make it easy to identify and validate behaviors. Code requiring full environmental simulation isn't truly testable. If you have to bring up a web server to test your code, then you can consider your code pretty much untestable. But how can I do it? I'm building a web service. There are many ways to fake out the services that you need to call in order to test your own code. And that's an art and a science. There's techniques around doing that called mocking and shunting and endo testing. And we'll get into it in this channel. But more importantly, I want you to understand why these things are important and how to test just the code that you wrote while leaving other dependencies untested. Testability means components can be verified independently and automatically. Early in my career, I worked on a project where testing required a full staging environment. Setting it up took hours and debugging it was a nightmare. When we refactored for testability, it broke dependencies and isolated modules. This cut setup time from hours to minutes, and it made debugging painless. Let's be clear, testability and testing are not the same thing. Testability is about potential. Testing is about execution. Testability focuses on how easy it is to validate code. Testing is a process of doing it. Having tests doesn't mean that your code is testable. Brittle tests that are dependent on specific implementation or environments indicate poor testability. Testable systems aren't just about tests, they're about confidence. They're easier to debug, extend, and maintain. I've seen teams waste weeks chasing bugs in untestable code. Every change triggered cascades of failures. Testable code brings predictability and peace of mind because every component is verifiable. How do you know your code is testable? Let's break it down. There are three key characteristics. 
modularity, singularity, and independence. For modularity, testable code allows us to break down our code into the smallest components that are independent from other components. Think of modular components like Lego blocks. Each block has a specific shape and purpose, making it easy to test and combine. Next, singularity. Each test should focus on a single behavior or outcome. Testing a logging system, for example, should validate that the messages are logged, not how they're stored or formatted. Testable code minimizes dependencies, reducing the need for a complex setup. If your tests require a full database, an API key, it's not independent. Use mocks or shunts or dependency injection to isolate those dependencies. Testability leads to better tests, but what makes a good test? Let's look at three principles. Singular focus. Each test should validate just one behavior. If it fails, you'll know exactly why it broke. Number two, avoid implementation details. Focus on outcomes, not the steps. If renaming a variable breaks your tests, your focus is misplaced. And then number three, repeatability. Tests should be deterministic. They should yield consistent results regardless of the environment. Flaky tests undermine confidence. Testability isn't just about validation. It's about a design philosophy that leads to more maintainable, scalable systems. So what is a good test? It turns out there are several characteristics that make up a good test. And I want to just focus on one of them with you, which is about the intention of the test. We want to make our features declarative because that way our tests can test the true feature rather than testing some implementation of the feature. And that's really important. We want our unit test to test units of behavior, not how we implement those behaviors. But if we write tests against implementation details and then we change those, de those details later, then our tests will fail. And they'll fail even though maybe the feature is still working correctly and giving the right output because our tests are dependent not on the output, but rather dependent on how we get that output. We don't wanna put our unit tests in that situation because then they become a burden rather than an asset. Unit tests help us refactor code. But if when we refactor code, all of our unit tests break, then we've quadrupled the amount of work for ourselves. So we wanna make our tests test our intentions, test the end result of what we're building. And this is critically important. We're gonna talk about this a lot because this is the key to doing test-driven development well and correctly. And when you see this, your assertions that you write are able to become a form of specification, are able to articulate what the code is supposed to be. Unit tests and doing them well can be the greatest asset an organization has for their IT, or if they do it poorly, it can become their biggest liability. Maybe the most important aspect of a good test is that it's declarative, because when I can make my features declarative, I can make my tests test my intentions rather than my implementation of intentions. What do I mean by that? Let's look at an example. Here's an example of a feature that is non-declarative. It would say something like, given that I'm on the homepage, when I click login and I enter the username user and the password password, then I should see the message you are now logged in. The reason that this is a poor test is that there are many reasons that this test can fail that have nothing to do with logging in. For example, if I change the message from you are now logged in to now you are logged in, that test would fail, but the user would still be logged in. So we want to make our features really declarative and really make it in such a way that we can test the essence of what we want to test. So a more declarative test would be something along the lines of, given that I'm on the home page, when I log in, then my login status should be true. And that could be implemented a number of different ways. We don't care. What we care about is in the test that we're thinking of it from that higher level, because then we don't get lost in the weeds. As a developer, the one metric I hold myself to is testable code. I wanna always write testable code because I know testable code equals quality code. 
testable systems respect boundaries, making each part easier to validate and extend. Testable code encapsulates complexity, simplifying internal complexities behind clear interfaces make testing easier. Another key aspect of testable code is the separation of concerns. Testable systems respect boundaries, making it easier for each part to be validated independently. Simplifying internal complexities behind clear interfaces or abstractions makes testing a breeze. Testability encourages small, incremental changes, reducing risks and increasing confidence in our code. Testable code isn't just another virtue. It's a key to creating software that's reliable, maintainable, and adaptable. Without it, your systems will crumble under complexity. Testability reduces bugs and simplifies scaling. I once inherited a legacy system riddled with dependencies. After refactoring for testability, everything changed. Bugs disappeared. My confidence grew in the code and the team that was working with me started to thrive. If this video inspires you to rethink your approach to testability, then hit like and subscribe. Together we can build systems that are resilient, reliable, and ready for the future. Testability is essential, but it's just one piece of the puzzle. In the next video, we'll explore how all the virtues combine to create a system that thrives under complexity. Don't miss it. If that video isn't up yet, then hit the subscribe and bell icon to be notified when it comes out. Join me on this journey. Until next time, happy coding.